Pia nika mandakari waleweza kusanga na mimi na watoto wangu ni nini na wagonjesa. Fainting spades, seizures, convulsions. The children were getting sick at a very bad rate. By 2008, a lead battery smelter had opened right on the edge of Owino Uhuru, which is a slum community on the outskirts of Mombasa with about 3,000 residents. And this smelter came to Kenya by invitation from the Kenyan government to boost foreign investment. But in the end, the smelter polluted the community, it killed workers, and the Kenyan government did nothing to monitor its activities. Inside the lead smelter, batteries are broken down and recycled for their lead. So it's very, very toxic work and real protections are required for workers in order to keep them safe. Glove to look at a kepata maramoja kumwesi. Glove yenye uketumia sikumbili ya nne imesha kabisa. Si a glove tena itabidu fanyi kasi na mkono. Workers in the smelter told us that when management would come to the processing room, they would be fully outfitted in protective gear, even though the workers themselves had little to no gear. Walikuwa kituambia hiyo kasi mahali imetufikia, hata tukewacha, hata tukiendelea, tukewacha tunaenda kukufa tu. Kwa hivyo walikuwa na tuadvise hiri tufanya tu. Three people actually died from lead poisoning. And lead poisoning can make you sick, but it doesn't usually kill you. And this just speaks to just how how exposed they were to very, very high levels of lead. Nandangu pale tulipigia mwaka umoja, wapili, watatu, napigia waine, nandangu wakanzo wa natumbo. Na mingu nye tana ilikuwa na udhofika, kimaisha. The story of George and Carissa, two brothers, really illustrates the exploitative situation that people were put in. Radangu, alinambia kumba, wee nenda, kwa sababu hali afeta ndani ya nyumba kwetu, likuwa ni sote tukiacha kazi, tutakula nini, hakuna maisha ya wengine kini yoyo kazi. Vite ita kama ni kufa, tutakufa, lakini tufanyele kazi, naona, sababu hali apesa likuwa hakuna. And so the decision was, since George was already sicker, he would leave and go home, and Carissa would continue to work in the smelter. And several months later, Carissa died. So when Carissa died, like, almost all the employees wanted to leave because they were scared. I went into the community. I told them, you are working in a smelter. You need to have them do lead tests on you to establish what levels are in your blood. Ili mchukua na msangawa ambapo haku amini pengine aliona lilipima vibaya. Haka niambea tarudia kunipima, liya kompea, na hea kwanza, na hea pili. Phyllis really became the community's leader in opposing the smelter. She organized residents to write letters to government agencies, there were protests staged on the streets of Mombasa that were covered widely by local media. Government agencies absolutely knew what was going on, both inside the smelter and in the community, and yet chose to do nothing. What Phyllis has been pushing for is telling these people, look here, I know we are poor, but even the poor are catered for in the Constitution. We have a right, our children have a right to good health. Everyone has a right to a clean and safe environment. In early 2014, the smelter closed down and moved elsewhere. But the horrible impacts of years of lead contamination remain. This metal refinery is a very good thing. We have to go to the house. We have to go to the house. All the waste water, the acid and everything was being channeled into the community. When the people are to me, now Majaya Wakajuapa and Atumia, Kopikia, Kufulia, Koshevyombo, Nata Kunyo, Nikosababu, Majaya and Raisu Kuliko, Yalea, and Serej. So the soil they walk on, the water they drink, and even the food that they eat is contaminated. 
The Center for Disease Control, the CDC, defines lead poisoning at blood lead levels of 10. Kelvin has lead levels of 38. joints <laughs> Recently, Kelvin is heading in a worse state. Right now, he's having um, fainting spells. He's having um, seizures. So it's reached a certain level whereby the next symptom is, is sorry to say, but it's actually death. The Kenyan government has an obligation to ensure that these people are living in a clean and healthy environment. The priority is getting these kids healthy, and then the community itself needs to be cleaned up. There is a lot of government agencies that have failed Kenyans. Before they start saying they are bringing in investors, they must have a way to control what goes into our environment to protect the people and then move forward.